So this is the AgExcel GX6 solution, and the reason we call it the GX6 is because it uses dual nozzle bodies uh, in order to get the, the rate that you're after, and it uses dual, what we call microtubing, and the microtubing allows it to flow a lot easier, especially for high viscous liquid like we're, where we're using here with this type of solution. It has um, the auto rate controller, and that controller can be the system basically can be controlled by any controller out there, Green Star, Egg Leader, Trimble, or own. It cannot be used by a manual rate controller. It does have to use an auto rate controller with a flow meter of some kind. And what we do is we have it coming through a filter. We have it going through the floating ball manifold system, and we'll speak about that here shortly. And then it comes down into our dual manifold system, and then you have the dual tubes that's going down into the system. Now, the reason why we're using microtubing, as I mentioned, we have 11 different sizes of microtubing. And basically, the microtubing is twice the size of its like in an orifice. And so when you look at the, the hole of the inside of an orifice, you see how small that is when you compare that to a microtubing. And the same here, we have, as I mentioned, quite a few different sizes that will accommodate the viscosity of the liquid and the rates that you're trying to achieve. So when a customer calls up, uh, we take the dimensions of their implement, uh, we take into consideration the viscosity of the liquid, and then we do our calculations, our rates, uh, and so forth, and that allows us to determine which microtubing they're gonna be using for that specific system. And in this case, uh, we're gonna show you basically how the system works. Right now, we have running through the system our filter, it's a 30 mesh filter, uh, and even with the microtubing, it doesn't even have to be a 30 mesh, it could be uh, no filter. We ran it without a filter, but we like to run filters because uh, you're not going to plug anything, but we still run a 30 mesh filter within. We have a magnetic flow meter. There's no moving parts in here, and so when the viscosity of the liquid changes, uh, the flow meter can accommodate for that. Unlike a turbine flow meter that has a little turbine in there, it has the chances of maybe particles getting stuck in there and so forth. So the liquid comes through the flow meter, <coughs> goes through the floating ball manifold, and then you can see the floating ball manifolds, how you can't see any balls here, but we have inside here a red one with a silver on top, the stainless steel making the movement just to give you an idea of what it looks like with that type of a setup. And then once it comes down, we are running 3 8 tubing, and that 3 8 tubing is designed to ensure that we're getting uh, a steady flow, there's no resistance like in a quarter inch tubing, especially with this type of fertilizer. We want to make sure we're getting good flow and then we get to the, the, the valves themselves. So when the system starts, like right now we're running five gallons an acre at five miles an hour and the way that we're able to get our rate basically is because we're running the microtubing. And the way this works on the dual nozzle body microtubing is that, for example, right now we're running the beige, beige microtubing, and that microtubing is, is what running our front row right now. If you notice, our pressure is right at about 12. So if I increase my rate, let's say I want to increase my rate to six gallons to the acre, my pressure is up to 15 now, and you see the ball floating there a little higher. And what that does is that it allows us to flow through the gray tubing. Now watch what happens to my pressure as I close the gray and open up the orange. You're going to see pressure starts to drop. So now my pressure came down. Uh, it was about 15, 16. Now it's at about 8 or 9 PSI. And the reason for that is because in the morning when your liquid's a lot more viscous, a lot more heavier, it's colder, then we'll start with the larger size microtubing and then as the day progresses your pressure will drop and inside the green star and trimble and so forth there's a pressure transducer that our harnesses connect to so you can set the pressure rating so when the pressure drops below 10 psi you can set that alarm to go off will, which will tell you about midday to go out back out and just change the nozzles and that will allow you to basically close one and open the other and you'll see the pressure go back up I said this will only happen typically once a day. The morning you're going to have colder fertilizer, and then in the afternoon, mid-morning, your pressure is going to 
start to drop, you close the, up, you close the larger one, open up the smaller one, and your pressure goes up so you have a steady flow. And the reason why uh, we don't like to see our pressure below 10 is because these are four pound check valves, and these check valves need approximately eight pounds of pressure across the, the boom to open up all of them evenly. And so that's the reason we want to see above 10. Uh, we don't like to see above 20 because that just heats everything up. It'll do it, of course, but you're just running things heat hotter. All you got to do is open up a valve and drop your pressure down. Now, if we take a look on the side here, you'll see how these manifolds are set up. So when you come in with your 3 8 tubing, it has all the, we have all the brackets that mount right onto the toolbar. And then that toolbar basically will mount the dual manifolds here. And it's a, it's a simple little close of the valve and opening of the valve, very simple to do. You'll see your microtubings together. And basically these two microtubes, we have a Y connector that'll connect them together. And then one tube will drop right into your applicator. And if we take a look at the gray, excuse me, the tan, you'll see the liquid flowing down here. It has a great little stream on it good steady flow and that's very heavy fertilizer it's like 11.2 11.3 well actually we had it out in the cold so it's probably like a 11.6 right now and you see the steady flow out of there and so when I take I'll show you here how it changes here but as I change this out you'll see basically the I'm gonna close the, the tan and open up the orange and you'll start to see it change And that's when uh, the pressure will drop because now we're getting it through the larger size orifice uh, tubing, microtubing here. And now you see the steady flow there, getting a good stream. And we've done all the catch tests and the catch tests are showing that the rates are right dead on the money. And you can see in the bucket there how heavy that fertilizer is pretty heavy stuff there. And it's flowing nice and free in there. The system itself is an AgXL GX2 dual pump system. And the dual pump system here has two pumps on the side and it'll allow you to get up to six gallons per minute max. And then these pumps are basically primed. There's a priming valve in the back. We like to see when the system goes on, we open up the little priming valve and that priming valve will allow the air to escape. One of the big things that you'll see in setting up these systems is that these pumps are diaphragm pumps. They draw extremely well, so they'll draw the liquid well, and they also can push the liquid well. So if there's, if there's liquid in the tubing, that liquid and the, and the force of the pump allows the check valve to open really, really easily. So it doesn't have a problem doing that. However, when you're first starting up the system and you have liquid coming through here and then there's air in the lines, that's where you're going to have your problems because it, the, the pump is not a good compressor. It, it struggles to push air, uh, whereas if it's liquid in there, there's more volume to open it up. So in the back, we have a small little valve, and that little valve, you open it up, it lets the air out, it starts to prime it. Once it primes it, then uh, you close the valve and the system will start to flow easily. So that's a, a little uh, valve that we have in there installed just for priming the systems. Not always. Sometimes you can get a system running without priming it. It'll just start right up, no problem. But typically because if there's air in the system, you'll have that problem. So if I were to shut this off, there's volume in the system already. I turn that back on. It, it goes right up to the rate. There's no problem with there because it already has the fertilizer in the row. So that's the same as if you were going through the field, you make your turn, you have your implement switch, your implement switch gets, twi your implement switch gets tripped, you make the turn, once you make that turn, uh, you're going through, you, you release the, drop the planter back down, right away your rate comes up, back up, it's right at six gallons an acre immediately. So it's, it's based off of the volume in the system, once it's primed, it's good to go. Like I said, it's always, when there's air in the system, that's when you're gonna have your problem. On the system, we also have, what we have is a, is a bypass valve. This bypass valve is great when you're doing lower volumes. So let's say the, uh, the system struggles a little bit to get at a lower rate. 
so you can bypass some of the liquid and it allows the controller to go a little bit lower and it allows that flow meter to lock in on that rate uh, because of the, usually what happens is that when you try to go at the lower rate it'll struggle with two pumps so you have to bypass some of the liquid to get that rate.